Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for joining me tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm going to be talking about Saturn in Capricorn um, for the next three years and how it's going to be affecting our health. Okay. Max? Oh, there we go. All right. So the reason I'm even uh, an astrologer today is because I really wanted to learn astrology because I was already um, in the medical profession. I was a licensed acupuncturist. So hypocrisy said, you know, he was the father of all medicine and said that no one has a right to call themselves a physician unless they have knowledge of astrology. So that's how I started out. And of course, uh, Paracelsus, um, he was about the art of healing starts with nature um, and astronomy and alchemy and ethics and philosophy. These were things that the great men from our past have really um, embodied and uh, brought forth. And of course, Albert Einstein, he's like indebted to astrology. Um, and Albert Einstein gave us light, you know, so that's pretty funny. So, yeah, so that's um, the little introduction of medical astrology. And next slide, please. Okay, yeah, so it's really interesting because I've been studying medical astrology for a long time. And um, when you analyze a person's birth chart, you definitely can see some of the miasms or what could probably come about in time. Um, strength and weaknesses, where we're prone for different uh, various diseases to take place, um, like a transit could come and then something will just pop up. Um, and it's just really how the body functions and how it's related to just the different energies from the sky. It's like so interesting to me. Um, so there's also remedies for balancing the disharmonies, remedies for clearing and nourishing. And you could also pick good dates for surgery. Um, but I would say somebody would have to be very proficient before I would really do that. Um, but I've studied with um, some very good medical astrologers that were also physicians or um, acupuncturists, and I've really learned a lot. And it's, it's like, the beautiful thing about astrology, we just can't learn enough, right? We just keep, you know, it's like the latest phase, right? But we cannot stop. Anyway, um, so also too, like if somebody's in a serious condition, a lot of times we could look to the moon and we could see if the person's going to improve or maybe not improve. And there's like a, a lot of different factors, but we're not going to go into that tonight. We're going to pre pretty much focus on Saturn um, in Capricorn from 1.27 degrees to 11.19 degrees will be woken up. And as you can see, let me move this a little bit so I can see. Um, else? Okay. So yeah, so the lineup here is, is a lot of Capricorn, you know. It's a very, very powerful chart and a very, very strong three years that's coming in. And I'm... I'm sure I'm not alone knowing that Capricorn could be as cold as ice sometimes, you know, and basically um, Saturn and Capricorn is going to be, you know, really wanting to know, you know, what's going on. Are we doing what we really came here to do? It's really wanting us to get on the path and stay there, um, kind of bring it down and ground the things we're working on. And I just have a lot of some important dates. Um, that will be occurring. Um, I really don't have a lot to say about this right now, other than um, the interesting thing about this is Chiron will be um, ingressing to go into Aries when Saturn goes retrograde. So there's gonna be a lot of um, information and soul healing going on really, because um, we're gonna either get re-triggered and have to deal with what's going on, or we're gonna be able just to heal and clear and I guess the force will be with us if we really make up our mind to just 
to do what we need to do, but we really need to be precautious too, because, um, well, let's see, uh, let's see the next slide for a minute. Oh yeah, this one, yeah, you could just actually probably skip that one too. Does anybody, you guys could just take a good look that we have, um, the, this was, uh, was this the solstice, Saturn ingress Capricorn, right? So we have the moon, Pluto, Black Moon Lilith, and Saturn, um, all in Capricorn. And then we have like Venus and the sun. And we also have um, Chiron, we have the Pisces energy going on too in the seventh and eighth house. And what's really interesting to me is that um, the sixth house is the house of, you know, our health and the moon is there and our emotions have a lot to do with our health. And we'll like look more into that later. So we could just move on because I mean, this is going to be a labor of love, you guys. There's like a lot of more, lots of information here, probably information overload. But anyway, um, so, you know, Saturn's many beautiful things too. It's not just gloom and doom. So Saturn gives us structure and protection and it gives us, you know, it grounds us here on the earth plane for the people who like to be here. <laughs> Capricorns like to be here more than other people. But anyway, so it, it rules our skeletal system, our bones, our teeth, um, our soft tissue, cartilage, ligaments, our lower legs, the parathyroid, um, which, you know, does control the calcium metabolism. And that's very important for Saturn. For our bones and the, and then you know when you really think about it, our bone marrow in Chinese medicine is like it was one of the mystery, the mystery, um, the mystery organs. And the bone marrow is like the depth of our essence. It's like the deepest, you know, of our DNA and our. It's just, it's just like the the richest part of our whole being that really holds space for our soul to be here on Earth and to do whatever we came here to do. So it also has um, connections to the gallbladder, spleen, the vagus nerve, and depression. And the vagus nerve is very important because it's what first, it, it's like the biggest nerve like in our whole entire body. And when we go into trauma or fight or flight, the vagus nerve is just, it really could cause a lot of problems with our autonomic nervous system and things that we can't really control. Like we go on fight or flight, we're not breathing correctly. So these are things that are happening and sometimes we're not even conscious of it. So um, there's a lot of pathology here and this is really important and I really love this kind of rule. But Saturn classically rules the two signs opposite the dot. I can't even say this word, so I'm not going to say it, of the sun and the moon. So that's Capricorn and Aquarius, right? Um, so the luminaries are very challenged by Saturn transits. And, um, you know, because the sun is opposite. Wait a second. The moon is opposite Capricorn, right? Yeah. And the moon, this is like really going to be a comedy show. No, okay, we're just going to like leave that for right now. But I know this is true. I'm just like having brain fog today because I seriously, it has really bad trans transits today in my own chart. But the show is going to go on. Uh, Saturn will, really won't be happy with me. So, um, okay, so major Saturn or tra transits are turning points to our aging process. And we have afflictions to Saturn are... Of course, chronic disease, Cronus, skin, bone, joints, kind of said that. And it hardens. It's, it's cold and dry, and things get hard and crystallized, and it causes obstruction. And then from there, you know, other things can take place when chi and blood isn't moving. And skin disease. So um, it actually could be part of our underactive organs, part of like even if we have a hypothyroid after we burn it out. Um, there's problems like dry skin, depression, dental problems, um, you know, anything that has to do with this, you know, scoliosis, um, a lot of accumulated toxins can get stuck in the body. So we really, really need to take care of our, our bones. So yeah, next slide. So yeah, so our emotions can get... Um, 
stagnated and we can go into paralyzed kind of feelings. So we really need to learn to balance um, our emotions, which are challenging. And um, Saturn could be our father or it can be our own um, voice that it puts discipline or, you know, wants us to grow up. So it's it really like a lot of our problems come from a lack of discipline or self-control. Um, spiritual underdevelopment and materialistic tendencies that are not balanced. So it manifests with depression, grief, sorrow, and fear. And the hard aspects, we really need to come to terms with what kind of fear is going on. And, you know, when we have a, co a conjunct, a square, or an opposition to any of the personal planets, this will manifest. And, you know, the funny thing about fear is you can't think your way out of a paper box. You cannot think your way out of fear. Fear is just something that takes you over until you can calm down and notice that you're in fear and really try to be uh, rational about it. So it's really about being comfortable, not being comfortable. <laughs> you know, there's an art to that. And vices of Saturn tend to uh, manifest in greed or um, you could be a miser. And sometimes people will be a thief. I thought that was interesting. Okay, okay, so our resistance are lowered when there's planetary cycles and transits that hit our natal chart. Um, the current transits to the natal chart or to the progress chart. And then there's also uh, midpoints and planetary pairs um, that are sometimes overlooked by traditionalists. Um, but the midpoint of planets are associated with health issues. Uranus transits to Saturn aggravate nervous um, disorders and melancholic aff afflictions. Um, and Uranus transiting, natal Uranus will be nervous exhaustion, insomnia, and nervous spasmodic afflictions. And these can be very problematic because once your nervous system's out of whack, that's another thing. You can't think that into calmness either. So thank God for holistic medicine. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, so Saturn in your chart can indicate, um, and I put can, I'm not going to say will or anything because, you know, I'm just not going to say that, but these are things throughout the whole presentation that can, um, they might and they, and they will, but I'm just going to say they can, it doesn't mean necessarily they're, they're going to. Um, the time, death, fear, and karma. And it, it presents with pain, constriction, um, our weakest organ will show up where Saturn is. And, you know, the good part, the higher end of, is, of our Saturn is courage and patience and our due diligence, our commitment and our authority in life. Um, and medically, this position may cause a stiff neck <laughs> and um, add autotoxication to your body. So when there's like toxins that are trapped and they don't leave your body, it causes like accumulation of this and then you just get you know autoimmune and secondary uh, conditions that became become primary show up from this it's also responsible from the past karma we bring back from our past lives so the sign represents where the disease could show up by the anatomical rulership the body's organs and the tissue systems the house represents the conditions that i'm gonna move this thing that come from the outside environment or how certain Ill illnesses can develop. Oh, and if there's any questions, you guys can just let me know. I mean, in the middle of it, it's not like, you know, so this is like interactive if anybody wants to just ask a question or anything like that. So um, Saturn uh, occupies, I'm just like a little bit how it goes through the houses. So Saturn in Aries is, or the first house, this energy will manifest in headaches, you know, chills, anything um, that has to do with your head, your brain, accidents, high blood pressure. Um, it's really important to take good care of your teeth, have adequate vitamins, proper breathing techniques, and preventative medicines and supplements. 
So Saturn and Taurus are the second house, like what we put in our mouth. Um, it has, we have a tendency with digestion and mumps. And I have to move this thing again. Oh yeah, slam. The neck, the ears, lower jaw. So anything in the throat, the cerebellum, the thyroid gland. So our dietary intake is very important. And it's really um, important to follow a proper diet to help reduce digestive um, problems or even get on enzymes if necessary. And then Saturn um, occupies Gemini or the third house, a tendency to suffer from asthma, rheumatic pains, uh, shoulder, arm, sciatica, the hip disease. This uh, Mercury, the house of Mercury is lungs, you know, the trachea, fingers, nervous system can be affected. And here you see I have a little picture, it's gonna be on all of them. And it's just the control, it's like the cycle for Chinese medicine, but it's how energy runs when it's running correctly. It's gonna go earth, water, fire, metal, wood. But sometimes we can have um, the controlling mechanisms aren't working. So it's gonna be counterflow chi or, or it's gonna be, you know, you know, something can be attacking another planet or another organ. It's like very complicated, but the whole idea is to balance um, our imbalances. And sometimes we can, and some things just we have to just kind of live with it, you know? <laughs> some things are little, if they get way out of whack, you just have to give it a TV and make it happy, you know? Okay, let's go on to the, the next series. Wait a sec, oh yeah, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so Saturn um, occupies cancer. The fourth house tends to suffer from, this is major digestion, and it's not only what we're eating, it's what we're digesting, you know, through all of our senses, because cancer's ruled by the moon, and it's just very um, sensitive, and the boundaries are, there's no real good boundaries with the moon. Um, so it rules, um, if people can get, like, a lot of uh, IBS, eating disorders, cancer, gallstones, it tends to affect our breast where we, you know, give life, where we give nurture, nurturance. Um, the chest, the diaphragm, stomach, the esophagus, and the left side of our body. And the empowering, empowering food choices and lifestyle choices to reduce the effects of Saturn. Um, and Saturn occupying the fifth house of Leo, the sun, the muscles of the heart, weak back, um, arterial sclerosis, and our spinal cord. Um, and that tends to, um, we need to really have the blood circulating correctly and um, really watch what we eat and take supplementation as well, um, not to have hardening of the arteries and things like that. Like our, you know, our heart gets hard or, you know, people who have a lot of heartbreak can very easily come down with um, heart attack um, or heart issues. Um, so, okay, Saturn occupies Virgo in the sixth house. And this is also a very interesting house because the water houses are the health houses. And the sixth house is really, you know, the house of health, really, and our daily habits and how we take care of ourselves. So it, that could also be weak intestines, um, uh, duodenum, solar plexus, abdomen, and our parasympathetic nervous system. So for this, I'd say smaller meals are recommended more often. Don't eat when you're upset. Um, and yeah, so that wraps that one up. <laughs> okay, so Saturn and Capricorn, the 10th house. So, uh, and this is funny because I have, I'm having a second Saturn return right now and very early degrees. And as soon as Saturn moved in, I was having a backache and my bones hurt. And I thought, this isn't this interesting, you know, like, cause, but you know, I took care of it, I'm taking good care of myself. So I, I don't neglect it and it doesn't get worse. So I'm doing what I can to, you know, um, do something preventative so I don't get worse. Um, rheumatism, eczema, disease, jaundice, our knees, our bones, Capricorn rules the knees and our teeth and skin and joints. And this rules the right side of our body. So the joints really become a problem in old age. People need knee replacements. 
Um, but the nature of this planet, it causes trouble and pain. So it's very important to keep our bones strong, take proper vitamins, which we'll go into later from when I have remedies for this. And also to just make sure we're exercising and keeping our body strong, um, which sometimes we take little breaks and that's not so hot. So Saturn and Aquarius, which is also ruled, you know, by Saturn in the 11th house, gives us weak ankles, curvature of the spine, um, other uh, afflictions, is that affections? I think it's afflictions, but it's affections too. Of the heart, back and arteries, um, the lower legs, um, the pineal gland, light exercise, walking, and um, preventative measures again are always the key. And then of course, last but not least, is Saturn and Pisces in the 12th house. And uh, Pisces rules the feet, cold feet we can have, bunions, tuberculosis, um, drop foot, addictions, um, toxins in the body. So it's very important to keep our feet warm, um, massage the feet, whatever you have to do to keep the blood going. Um, and just, you know, take good care of yourself, baby, because you belong to me. So then we can go on to the next slide. Okay, we missed these three houses here, so uh, we're back to seven, eight, and nine. Okay, we, it's okay, because everything's not perfect right now. So I'm just going to say, we don't have to be in order. You think Saturn's going to mind, guys? Okay, so, wait, did we do this one already? No, we did not. So it's, you know, pretty much the same. It's just, it's in Libra, and that's going to be renal stones. Uh, we could have urine disorders, malnutrition. Um, involuntary muscle movements. Also, the seventh house Libra could lead into diabetes one day. Uh, kidneys, uterus, adrenals, these are all part of the body parts that are um, goes with this territory. Um, and extra measures for this is, of course, you know, preventative. And Saturn is Scorpio in the eighth house. This is another house of health, and this suffers from constipation. Suppression of our menses, sterility, inflammation of the nose, hoarseness of the throat, throat infections and addictions and boils because it opposites the, the second house. So the body parts which are affected are the bladder, uh, the genitals, the sex organs, um, the pubic bone. And then we are going to go into Saturn and Sag, the ninth house, and that's sciatica, gout. It's a lot of heat, kind of heat disorders, because it's a fire sign. So it's disease um, and tuberculosis. And that's the hips, thighs, ileum, femur, and the sacrum. And it's a lot of outdoor uh, activities, and fresh air are really good. Okay. Next slide, please. Oh yeah, he's my favorite nowadays. When Saturn forms a hard aspect to a personal point in our chart, including like a degree, like when it's on a degree, the sun moves Mars or Mercury or Venus will feel it. It will take a hit. And that would be for the heart, at the conjunct, the squares and the opposition. So Saturn slows us down. It stops us in our tracks sometimes. We're like almost paralyzed, right? You know, so there's delays and setbacks, there's pressures, you know, frustration, you know, things get tight and stiff and, we just want to just, we just don't want to even be happy in our own bodies when this happens. So, but this happens for a bigger reason for wisdom and freedom to be able to develop. And um, the Saturn cycles, you know, if we are conscious and mindful of what's going on, we can achieve um, and overcome and mature. Basically, it's about maturity. and. Uh, don't quit the dip. Okay. This like slow transition. I have to be patient. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, oh my gosh, you guys, I don't need, this might be emotional. This might be um, information overload, but basically Saturn's on 
is our overall vitality, um, our metabolic disharmonies, our immune system. And where we're blocked emotionally, like if, you know, it could make us really not shine very bright. Saturn and the moon, uh, it'll affect the, maybe we're not getting nutrition from our food. Maybe uh, there won't be enough to thrive. Um, the baby's not getting enough food. Um, and there could be very intense stuck emotions. Mercury um, and Saturn affects the nervous system, um, nervous exhaustion, respiratory function, and that can be strengthened, I mean, constricted, and there's, that also would be anxiety. Saturn and Venus, um, anabolic processes of the organism, uh, female organs, fertility, um, Venus is, you know, the sweet taste, it's like, we, we don't want to eat um, too much sugar. It's like, but it affects our menstrual cycle and our sexual response. So uh, let's see, Saturn and Mars is stiffness, depression, you know, kind of choleric inflammation, irritation, um, and patholo pathological er aggravations will be like yellow bile, like when people are having indigestion and gallbladder issues. Um, anger and depression. And then Saturn and Jupiter involves the liver. And um, it could be anger sometimes too with Saturn, Jupiter, um, and depression. And it's like a sogging, it's too much. It's just excess, you know, it's just too much. So it's toxicity that could be happening. And Saturn to the natal Saturn is the bones and joints and connective tissues. Saturn to Uranus, nervous the spasmodic character and Saturn to Neptune can involve deep-seated um, toxicity of the blood system and lymph system. And transits to Pluto, uh, they're challenging transformational crises um, where we feel overwhelmed. Um, it's just, you know, like we feel like this, we cannot, we don't feel like we have what it takes to get through a Pluto transit sometimes, but it's really to break us open and down so we can go to what's next, whatever Uranus is gonna bring next. Okay, so the midpoints. So this is basically the same, Mars, Saturn relates to breathing, inflammation, jo joints and bones, Uranus, heart rhythms. Um, it's a good time actually though, you know, it, 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 there's certain things like it's good for Mars rule surgery, so it could be a very good surgeon, um, but we're not going to go into that today. Mars, Neptune, um, that's just inflammation and allergies. I just threw that one in there. Um, Saturn, Neptune relates to physical and emotional vulnerability, um, boundary issues, slowing, slow developing illnesses or illnesses that are hard to detect. Like you, somebody will keep having some pain and they keep testing and they don't know what it is. It's Saturn, Neptune. And a struggle between the higher and lower nature of ourselves. Moon Saturn is a structural midpoint in the nutritive. So we, are we getting nurtured, you know, through our food, through our friends, through our lifestyles? Are we nurturing ourselves even with, with our own feminine side? Mars, the point of obstruction or blockage, is a great structural stress, injury or trauma, breathing difficulties, Inflammation of the bones, joints, and marrow. Neptune, uh, chronic and vulnerable. Um, it's where a weakest organ will be as well. And it could also be like toxicity or alcohol or drug addictions. Mars, Saturn, Pluto. This could bring on death you know, or transformation to another realm. Um, some strong disciplinary measures can be implemented and the rulers of endings and transformation so um, a lot of abuse and abuse and violence could happen with this combination so you will look to the chart where the natives midpoints lie in these departments and kind of help see what's going on okay now into the solution how to survive Saturn so Saturn's cold dark and dry Wear black on Saturdays, guys, and donate money to the less fortunate, and be responsible. Nourish our essence. So I like charcoal. I mean, I'm really doing this in honor of Saturn, too, because like I'm in my second Saturn return, really. So I've been using charcoal body scrub, and I love it. 
and fragrance oil and incense. This is really good. Massaging sesame oil to nourish our skin. Um, it's kind of a Ayurvedic oil, but I think coconut, you could use any kind of oil, but sesame oil is really good. Um, dark blue or black. Eat foods that are dark blue or black, like, you know, blueberries and dark cherries and things that are really dark black and really good for you. Um, really think about grounding energy. Um, it has to do with our root chakra, our survival. Um, if we're not feeling supported, we need to really start feeling supported in life. So um, when Saturn hits, maybe something happens and we realize we're not being supported. Um, so we could chant to Saturn and I'll give you the, um, I'm gonna, I'll give you the Saturn chant a little bit. And some of the beautiful stones you can wear are watermelon, tourmaline, obsidian, and black. Um, anything black, you know, or even uh, anything black, it'll kind of like take the dark or negative energies and just either um, dissolve them away or won't let them get to you. Um, so then again, like the best doctors is sunshine, pure water, fresh air, healthy diet, meditation, and Saturn oil with patchouli, marath, and pine. Okay. <laughs> what did I do next? Okay, yeah. So Capricorn, Saturn's souls, and the soul journey is from fear to courage, empathy and compassion, self-discipline, create healthy boundaries, avoid procrastination, and where we have fear and distrust, it's very, very hard to share our worries at times. Um, so we really have to try to be um, not burdened with it and not over-responsible or too dramatic. And when we are really lining up, we can be very purposeful and inspiring to others, responsible and respectable leaders in our community. And um, how do we do this? Well, first we have to clear the past and bring closure to unfinished business and show compassion and not criticism for ourselves and others and love ourselves and others and allow, you know, we have to make appointments sometimes for pleasure in our life because when Saturn is on your Saturn, you, you don't, you just have to work, work, work. I mean, in every department, it's just a lot of busy, busy doing. So, you know, you guys, you guys could come, I'm not going to go through all of this, but basically the black flower remedies, they're here for emotional, um, they kind of help balance our emotions and what we're going through. And I'm not going to go through them all now, but you can look, you know, Linda will probably give the, if you guys want the PowerPoint, um, my pleasure. So she can give it out. Um, and it'll show you where you can mix. Sometimes you, you'll look and I think, I think it's the next page gives a recipe for this, how you could even make, um, you look, yeah. So there's a little here, how you could actually make, um, your own little concoction. Cause usually you mix like five, six different, um, flower, black flower remedies together. So you want to look for, you know, transits that are applying more than separating. Um, cause you kind of like feel it and feel it until it happens. And then you're like, Oh, kind of relieved. But you know, when you're feeling it, it could really burn you out. So this will help keep you mellow and it'll help kind of neutralize what's going on. So, um, you choose like your sun, your moon, you know, whoever rules your first or sixth house. Um, and you choose the opposition or square or quinquanx before a semi-square. So you'll have, you know, if you have a lot of hard transits, you gotta just choose your transits carefully. And um, I also recommend meditation. And for a lot of us, it's really hard to really cultivate very disciplined, like meditating for a long time. I mean, eventually at times in our life that does feel good, and Saturn likes that. But there's times where, even if you just close your eyes for three minutes and just, just breathe and connect to your higher self and connect and just clear your head out. Um, it, it can do wonders and give blessings to others and, and in gratitude because gratitude is the attitude that wins. It's a winning combination. Okay. Next.
Oh, this is like um, oh, funny, funny, but that's okay. The bone broth is supposed to be in the middle. <laughs> but um, so these are some of the supplements. And we'll have to fix the slide thing up a little bit later. I don't know why it came out like that, but um, bone broth soup is really, really, really good. And I have a recipe for that on the next page. And that's really, really cooking the bones for, you know, 36, two days. You can cook it for two days even. And so, you know, fish oil, these vitamins, vitamin D, K, B12, vitamin C and A, very, very essential that we are having the proper vitamins so our body could generate new cells and tissues and what we need to live. So horsetail and chondritin, glucosamine, collagen, these are very good for the bones and building strong bones and keeping them moist. Um, when we get dry little bones or teeth, they break. Um, so, um, and of course, you know, horsetail is high in uh, silica. So you have long, beautiful, silky hair. And daily exercise is really good. And the biochemical salt is calc phosphate. So... That's a little bit in the nutrition and supplement department. Um, oh yeah, that's the bone broth recipe for you guys. Um, so it's not really the recipe, but it just tells you a little bit about it. But there's a lot of recipes online. Um, so, but it's really good for your immune system. It helps your GI tract um, absorb. And you know, there's a brain gut um, connection. So your, you know, your brain and your gut are totally connected. So um, it's, it's very good to like really try to get your um, GI check in order. Um, yeah. Okay. So next slide, please. Oh yeah, so yeah, so sapphires are really, really, really good for an afflicted setter. And will help one be more detached and balanced. And for the little mantra, you can say it 108 times, um, which is I think the sun and the moon's distance. I just learned from is it the sun and the moon from the earth? It's 108. I know I guess Gemini bread on that one again, but yeah, it was really interesting. But I know it's a lot to do with karma. So Om Gangana Patiye Namaha. And this is um, for Saturn to help um, with obstacles and just for us to really, you know, be in contact with Saturn, you know. Okay, oh, was that all of, hi, was that all of them? That was it. Oh, okay, good. Then we're done. Would you like me to check? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess, but I thought there was more, maybe not, it's all perfect if it's okay. Any questions? Yep, that was the last one, so. Yeah, that's good then. Um, I have a question. Um, okay. That diagram back there about, let me just go back to it. Okay, one second. Oops, sorry. This one with the, the water, wood, fire, earth, metal. Um, uh -huh. I can't make any sense out of it. What, you know, how could we use that? What, what does it mean? Well, this, you know, everything's energy and energy. Um, okay, so this is like one of the principles for you know, traditional Chinese medicine and there's rules that yin and yang and everything will become its opposites. It can only be broken down to it's like its simplest point. So we have the five elements and that's what everything is made out of, you know? So, okay, for instance, earth contains water. See, earth contains water. 
I mean, wait, yeah, earth contains water, and then water, like, nurtures wood, and wood feeds fire, and then fire, you know, is metal. But, and so there's a generating cycle. See how it goes around in a circle? So fire, earth, metal, water, wood. So there's, everything's connected to this, like emotion. Okay, let's say take wood, okay? So in the springtime, all my clients will come, and they'll all have, like, neck aches or you know, wind problems, because it, it rules wind. It's the liver. Um, it's energy that comes and goes. Somebody can be sick one minute, they're fine, one minute, they're not. You know, it's like when wood gets brittle, then it becomes hard and it can crack, right? It's not like a tree that's supple and moist. So when there's too much fire or, or things are not running in the order it's supposed to, then fire is going to back up and it's going to scorch the wood. Like I said, scorched, we're, we're going to have scorched wood right now or scor scorched earth so fire is burning up the earth right now in california so and now earth is um you know water's coming down with mud right so like when they're not running properly the organ system or the element or whatever is next is either getting attacked by the energy, it's counterflow chi going the wrong way and it's not generating it's not going in the pro proper okay. sequence so, so many times, like I had clients and they go and get their gold litter taken out and then they still have the same problem. And I said to them, don't get a gold litter operation. It's not even that. And it's not because most of the time people just take out organs and then your body cannot even have the proper enzymes to digest food. So it, it's just like everything has a purpose and it's like with anything, if you don't take care of it, it's going to fall apart or it's going to demand more energy from something. I hope that kind of explains it. It's, very, it's kind of complicated. Yeah. Like, you know. <clears throat> yeah, it kind of explains it. Thank you. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. So anyone else? Lauren? Yes. yes. Hi, I have a question. Um, I'm um, just heading into my second Saturn return too. This is Louise. And in the first house. And instantly I'm having dental problems and I also got, um, yeah, <laughs> and I, I know, also, I know, you can't leave the stuff up. I know you really can't. And so I'm, I think I'm pretty much taking everything on your list there, but would you mind talking a bit more about diet that would help it? Because I can't eat bone broth all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you can eat bone broth all the time, but there's a lot of, um, you know, foods that are very, very good for, for like building bone or like, you know, even like, I don't even know how safe sardines would be, but anything that has bones in it, you could eat edible bones, but now there's Fukushima. So I'm afraid to eat too much fish. Um, but you know, things that are like, you know, oils, like, um, you know, kind of anything that's moisturizing to your body. Um, mm -hmm. I would, you know, do a lot of, you know, fish oil or, you know, I put, you know, put olive oil in some drinks, like whatever. You want to keep your body moist. And I would actually do, I'm doing a lot of um, outer body stuff, like lotions and creams and, you know, even CBD oil. I mean, like whatever works, put it on because our bodies are so dry. And I don't know, I'm in the winter here. It's freezing cold and dry. And well, yeah. I'm in Utah. It gets very dry and very cold. Oh, here, so. I've been to Utah. Yeah. It's so beautiful there. But yeah, but yeah, it's still dry. You're in the mountains, right? You're in. It's yeah. Beautiful. I was at St. George. That spa there it was great. I was at um, Green Valley Spa. Oh my God. Mm. But it but is very, way. very. It's very, very dry. I'm slathering vitamin E oil on, and I put oils in my smoothies and things. Yeah, so I'm doing the. That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And, you could just put, you know, coconut oil or rub oil in your whole body and then go take a shower. Mm -hmm. You know, it really helps ground your energy and your emotions too. Mm. Um, yeah. And so I'm trying to think. And I'll just keep taking all those things. I'm also taking Dr. Christopher's. Um, do, you, do you know Dr. Christopher's remedies? Um, I think I've heard of it, but, you know. Yeah his bone and his tooth and bone one or whatever it's called oh god so you know what you're doing that's good but you should just go to the dentist though really because oh i've been to the dentist too <laughs> i've got two two partial crowns now it's all falling apart so. <laughs> but luckily i go to holistic dentist too but um, oh god so you're yeah but this was really interesting so thank oh, you thanks. i'm thinking people are probably bored because like i'm into medicine and not everybody I don't think everybody's into it, so I'm sitting here talking about, you know, 
this and that but yeah i'm glad it's helpful good oh no it's really really interesting i'd love to I, mm. somebody commented that they would love to hear about it with from other planets as well yeah i'm thinking of maybe even doing an online like seminar or something one day because mm -hmm. i you know i mean i love all aspects of astrology but this is the mm -hmm. main reason i went into it but mm -hmm. i really do think it's if we can understand what's going on and it doesn't really change things, but it's like even like a miasm or like we might get something because it's genetic, but if we, you know, it's like a telomere of a cancer cell. Like if we keep everything preventative, it may not, hit, it may not happen mm -hmm. or we might delay it, mm -hmm. um, which is interesting. But then my sister's going to, you know, I'm trying to be not so healthy nowadays because my sister would usually say, oh, you're so healthy. Everyone's going to be gone and you're going to be living forever. And, have nobody so i'm like yeah, maybe i don't want to be here so long but it's just a joke but yeah no. I think, <laughs> yeah but i think getting older if you know we feel happy and we're not in pain mm -hmm. that getting older will be more pleasurable and it won't be such i mean of course it's going to be a loss getting older it's really a humbling challenging experience however i think if we could live in our bodies and you know, yoga and doing things like I think yin yoga would be really good mm. for what we're doing now. Um, you know, detox saunas, but you don't want to do a sauna too much right now because it might be too drying. Mm. But you know, humidifiers, bath. anything to make you a little bit moist and you know, not so steam cool. bath. <laughs> yeah, saunas are good sometimes too, but they might be too dry right now. Yeah. No, thank you. I I really really enjoyed it. So just so you know. <laughs> People are interested. <laughs> Anybody else? Questions? Lauren, do you think a massage would be very helpful for Saturnian problems, like to move the chi and to get the, the blood circulating? Yes, it's very good because it will um, open up the muscles and the fascia where we have memory of traumas. Everything's in our fascia, the tissue, the connective tissue. So a massage helps the lymph system move. There's so many different systems that are involved um but it helps detox it helps move chi and blood and it relaxes our nervous system well when we don't feel good or things are cold inside we're in shock kind of like when you have a fever you know that really chill to the bone feeling i mean it's like too hot turns into cold so yes i think massage is the best if like life without massage is not worth living <laughs> Well, I get a massage every week and I get a shoulder, neck, and sometimes my head. And um, because I have inflammation in the, in the top of my neck. Yeah, but you really need to work on your ankles and your wrists too, because, really? yeah, because we have the whole entire body, uh -huh. because you really want to move the energy out of your neck. So it's good to do your neck, uh -huh. but you want to be able to move it so it doesn't stay in there. You want to break it up and then move it out. Oh, well, yesterday I got her to do my my fingers, my hands. Yeah, like get a whole body massage. I mean, you know, not entire body, but you know what I mean. Oh, pretty okay. much. So you think um, more of the body, like a full body massage would be more Yes, I think a full body is a lot better because, um, okay, it, it helps temporarily if you're just doing the area. But then when you're done, the energy is like not flowing or opening. It's just kind of, it's moving, but not like it could be, you know? So sometimes I use cupping or I do other things on people to really clear. You want to detox, clear, and then nourish, you know? So Great. you have to go to somebody who like is, like, does myofascial release or something or, you know, regular massage is good too. Just drink a lot of water when you're done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have um, a little comment in the chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> Karen says, hello work is amazing to release fascia and restructure our frame. Which Hello. one? Let me see. Hello. Hello. I never heard of this. So this is interesting. I do like myofascial release. So what is Hello work? I, I thought know. I knew pretty much of everything. So let's, I want to know this. I want to learn something myself. Perhaps you could type it into the chat, Karen. Oh, here she goes. Is she here? Uh, it's an 11 session journey to release fascia. Fascia. Oh, fascia. Okay, yeah, because yeah, salt tissue, the issues are in the tissue for sure. Uh -huh. I've trained with John Barnes and I know all about the fascia, trust me. And 
I, that sounds really cool. So it's a journey. It's deeper emotional. Yeah, I, it's emotional relief. Yeah, that's what that's what happens in cranial sacral and myofascia. But I, it's eleven session journey. So that's interesting. If they set up an intention first, or I don't know. Lauren, do you feel that really, really super deep massage, like to the point where it's almost well, you're in almost in pain, mm -hmm. will these things that you're talking about? Um, yeah, sometimes it's good, but I won't advise it for everyone. And mm -hmm. like, you're not an athlete and you know, you could really, you know, you know, cause trauma, you know, you don't want to have to go get, you know, fixed after you have body work. So you really, if someone's going to do that, they have to know your body. They have to open you up first and they have to know what they're doing. They have to know how to work with the, the fascia and the muscles and the motions. There's so many dimensions, you know, like healing is on multiple dimensions, like just like the different rays or the different planets. Like we're not just our body, you know? So um, I do think it's good, but I wouldn't say it's good for everyone. And it might be good at certain times in your life and maybe not for others. Mm. So it all depends on what you, you're, wanting to do, but if you have, you know, really tight adhesions that crystallize, you have to work them out. Yeah, you do, but you can't just go to town. You got to really kind of open up the system first and then, yeah. Great. That's great advice. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Any questions? Go ahead, Wanda. I just wanted to say thank you so much for this. Um, you kind of answered a question um, for me because I have always had a problem with cold hands and cold feet, especially in the winter time. Mm -hmm. And I never thought to connect it to Saturn. Oh yeah. Uh, Saturn can jump. And, and this might help uh, in a, address the question that Karen asked about the planets. I would think that you could take the house, the, the natural house ruler and also maybe look to the, that planet. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I have Saturn conjunct Mercury in Pisces. Okay, so that could even be like lung issues, it could be nervous, you know, nerves, it could be, you know, Pisces is your feet and hands and circulation too. So Saturn is cold and dry and it constricting. So it brings things to a halt. And so you can massage your hands and feet before bed and put, you know, good oils on and put socks on and go to sleep. So you could turn this around, but you have to work it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I finally found some good, uh, some wool socks, and that has, has helped tremendously. So, yeah. rub, rub, you know, do your feet massage, like foot reflexology and things like that, and it really helps the circulation. And it's, it's amazing what, like, if we manually just do move the chain of blood, like, it does wonders, you know? I had one other question. Um, would green leafy vegetables help with that as well? Help, well, yeah. uh, it, well, bone issues, period. Yeah, but this is the thing. Like certain, like spinach, some of them take it out of your bone. You know, like sometimes spinach can, certain vegetables is, is very good. But, you know, it's all about the balance because like it's the yin and the yang. So it's the potassium and the magnesium and it's the pump. It's the sodium and the calcium. So it's really like, like the yin and the yang, right? They have to be like not too far apart. So you don't, sometimes you might think you're doing good and then you're actually, like once I thought, oh, I'm going to drink uh, distilled water and I went on this kick and I didn't know I was depleting my body of all the, the minerals because there was no minerals in there. So like sometimes when you don't, you're not knowledgeable of what the foods are, how they actually affect. That's why it's good to, I've studied a lot of functional medicine too. So um, depending on what you, you know, go get your, your calcium and your vitamin D checked, especially for, you know, menopause for women when we're going through changes. So, you know, I don't like to just, you know, I could say it could possibly, but I don't, I can't really say things because legally I'm like, you know, bound to like paperwork and responsible. So I have to be careful with my wording, but before I would do anything, you know, I'm not saying don't eat your vegetables, of course eat your vegetables, but you have to see where you're at and then figure out what the plan is, you know, like you might need right. vitamin D or if you're not getting enough sunshine, maybe your body's not metabolizing it or there's a lot of things that could be going on. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you. 
You're welcome. Anyone else? I just wanted to mention that I'm I'm drinking ch uh, chicken bone broth every day. Oh. I love it. I'm a vegetarian, but I've got this dehydrated, like a high dehydrated uh, chicken yes. bone broth, and you put one teaspoon in a cup of hot water, and I have about three cups a day. And I think it's I I, f I feel like my hair is growing more. I don't know. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, because you're actually drinking like, when the bones cook that long you're taking the marrow or the, the essence out of the bones and you're, um, it turns almost like into a gelatin and then you're actually, that goes right into your bone system. So, um, beautiful. That's really, really good. And that's why sometimes when you have like, uh, if I have a thyroid disorder, uh, don't go on Synthroid. I told myself, go on, um, what am I on? Uh, the, it's some kind of, I can't even think right now. I'm brain dead. Um, it's a natural. It's a natural one from animals. So you're actually getting it, f the the source that's exactly the same tissue or the same makeup. So you know, so you're getting the energy from the bones for exactly what the bones need. So it's and I would probably do more than just in your tea, like in water. Why don't you just you know put some vegetables in there and drink it for soup? Oh yeah, I love it. Um, do you have it here in USA? Do you have the hydrated? Bone yeah, bone? yeah, yeah. And you you can make it yourself, or you could just buy it now at Trader Joe's. So it's like, but it's 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 really good when you make it yourself, or you have like a mother stock, and you 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 know, it just takes a lot of prep work though. So you know, if you can even get it at the store, I mean, there's. I would just, I think it's a really good food to have, and there's actually collagen powders and things you can take as well. Mm, fantastic. Okay, we're going to be, we've got a few minutes left. Any final questions, comments? I'd just like to say, Lauren, that was absolutely wonderful. I will be going over those slides. I will be listening to you. My sweet, this is just, just. <laughs> not you. I'm so happy. I'm glad to be of any kind of service that I can be and. You guys have, I've learned so much. It's just a wonderful community. And even though it's kind of like esoteric or, you know, it was existential because no one gets together in real life, lifetime. Well, who knows? Maybe we will one day, but I love it. So, so thank you. We love you. We love you too. Love you. Thanks for I love you guys. Down to helping us with our health. So thank you. Yeah. For that. Doing a maybe we'll even do like a little seminar one day or do some chart you know who knows maybe we'll do charts or i'll do a inexpensive little class if anybody's interested sure. just let me know. absolutely and, uh, and you will be doing um um four zoom meetings i think on well we'll see i'm gonna try because this has been like really stressful for me to make all these slides and stuff but <laughs> i might i okay. might be getting better as i go so we'll see okay. it's very we'll good see. training yeah okay but I probably will. I'm just gonna, I probably will. But I mean, like where we would really look at people's charts and there's like so much to it. Like if you, you know, but it's like, you want to like really catch things before someone has, like I studied with an acupuncture teacher who's an astrologer and, you know, we make up herbal, we could look at the chart and make up herbal formulas and we could see what's, you know, what's really causing it. It's like really, really amazing, but it's very very layered and very intricate and it's you know i actually have like medical software but i i don't you know i feel like this is something that you know takes you know like even lee liam and i studied with a few different people but it takes so many years to be an expert at anything mm -hmm. and um so a little information is dangerous but an, a lot of it is an expert so uh -huh. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you so much. We'll leave it up to you to decide what you'd like. Yeah, no, I know a lot, but I'm not, I'm just like saying I probably know enough to give some classes and to, you know, do more, but I'm not going to be like it, certain things I could teach, but I'm not going to teach things on, you know, how to figure out herbal formulas because, um, but I could do other things to people that are in, who aren't like in the medical profession. Um, but we could maybe do an herbal thing eventually, but there's like so many things to understand before you get to something like that. You have to like take the seasons and the time and the day and the, it's like a lot of stuff. Okay. But it's so interesting. I love this field. I well, love astrology. Very helpful, I feel. 
Um, you know, we've all extracted things that uh, have been very helpful for all of us today. So thank you for that. And I'm off to get my full body massage. <laughs> so thank yeah. you, Lauren. Yeah, I'm going to get some back flower remedies myself in a massage. Oh, them as well, yes. So thank you from all of us and we'll catch you next uh -huh. time. Namaste, guys. Love you. Thank, thank you. you. So excellent, Lauren. Oh, thank you. I star baby. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right, let's see. Are we all going into one more meeting, right? Yep. One yeah. more. Yep. See you. We'll see you in the next round. My dog's going to get a medal. She's so good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.